Friends, welcome to our homestead. I want to talk about potentially a flaw in all modern solar power systems for residential and probably even commercial. But that is not to say that I dislike solar power. Obviously, I'm a huge proponent of it. It powers my lifestyle here on my homestead in multiple different forms. But let's talk about that challenge and potential flaw so that it doesn't frustrate you when you are putting these systems in to power your homestead. Let's get going. So I'm standing here in front of our Victron system, which powers our barn and our well. And in our barn, we've got multiple power tools, compressors, you know, things that I use a little welder, and it does a good job of powering that when it's working. Recently, I've had a lot of challenges with the inverters, talking with the MPPT, talking with the battery communications in the batteries themselves, no matter if it's my Life Power 4 batteries or the big battery brand, and then also communicating through the Serbo communications hub. Now, this is not specific to Victron, to big battery, to the EG4 Life Powers, or to GrowWatts, Solarks, Schneiders, or the EG4 inverters. All of them could have issues. Recently, my friend Pete B, who also has a YouTube channel, has had troubles with his Schneider inverters. Now, Schneider is supposed to be the top, the absolute best in residential inverters and also commercial inverters, but he's had issues. And my friend Neil, who just lives down the road from me, a fellow homesteader, he has Solark installed in his house and he's had trouble with his. I had trouble with my EG4 inverters. I had trouble with my GrowWatt inverters, and they all stem from this one thing. And that is firmware slash software. Now, I'm not a computer engineer. I don't really know the difference between the two, but the parts and pieces for the solar systems just randomly stop communicating with one another. I was talking with the guys at Signature Solar the other day, and I was telling them that I wished that these type of systems weren't so computerized now. They used to be more analog electronic and now they are digital electronic. And we'll talk about that in a second. But since they are computerized or digitally electronic, that has caused some issues. And I have seen that and so have my friends. And this video is just to make this issue aware for new people who want to DIY their own systems. Friends, you are going to run into computer problems with these components. And it doesn't matter if you've got expensive components or inexpensive components, the best brand or a brand that's not well known at all. It happens to all of them. Now, will it happen less frequently to the more expensive brands like the Schneiders and the Victrons? Yes. However, they still have their issues. So you need to be aware of that and prepared for that. So a computer system is an electronic device, but not all electronic devices are computer systems. And what that means is the digital computer electronics have data that they process, they have logic that processes that they do, they have memory, storage, a processor, and power. And in turn, they have software or firmware that runs those processes. And most electronics in the past were not computerized. They were not digital electronics, they were analog. And that includes older solar power systems like the older Outbacks and some other brands that just keep working and working and working. They're not as powerful and they don't do as many things, but they just keep going. With these, you have to keep them constantly updated with new firmware. And the more complex the controllability of these things becomes, the more potential they have for issues. And I know what some solar detractors are going to say is that, well, this stuff doesn't work very well for home applications. Well, it has only gotten better and more powerful over the last 50 years. And yes, solar residential has been around for 50 years now. So let me talk about the specific issue I've had with this system, and I think we've worked it out almost. And what is going on here, you can see that I've got the covers off the inverters and I've been doing a lot of work in here recently. And again, a shout out to the guys at Signature Solar because they've been with me step by step 
and the guys at EG4 also, which is owned by Signature Solar, in trying to diagnose and figure this out. So the main problem was the servo and also the inverters would not recognize the state of charge on any of my batteries, whether it's the Life Power 4s or the big battery. And what that did was cause the inverters to shut down at 20% state of charge on the batteries. But in reality, those batteries were 100% charged. Now I reset the state of charge shutdown at 0% and 5% and 10% and 15% and it did not matter. The inverters still shut down at 20%. So in essence, my system would not run at all. Now when the sun hit the panels to charge everything, the watts on the Servo GX Touch would show that I had 1500 watts coming in. But that wasn't making it to the batteries for some reason. And immediately that wattage would go down and down and down and down and down until it was maybe 20 watts. This is all due to computer issues and the different parts and pieces not talking to one another. So of course, what do you do? You do a firmware update on everything. I did that with the MPPT and also with the Servo. It still didn't fix it. I did that update with the EG4 communications hub and the Life Power 4 batteries. It still didn't fi fix the issue. There is no communications with the BMS on the big battery system, but it still wasn't reading it right. So what Victron suggested that I do was revert back to an older firmware on the Servo. And they mentioned that their new release of the firmware on there was having issues. We tried that, it didn't work. Finally, I dismantled everything and I completely firmware upgraded everything again. And now it's kind of working. So as you can see on my inverters, it doesn't show that I have a low state of charge or battery low indicator on them. So that's good, however, you can see that I have 100% state of charge on this battery indicator here for the big battery, and it goes to idle, and then it goes to charge. It goes to idle, and then goes to charge. Let's look on the servo and see what that tells me. Now it's a cloudy day. You can see that we are not getting any sun really in from here, so we're using from the battery. You can see we have an 84% state of charge and this is what the servo is telling us, or the inverters is telling us. Now that's better than 20% because these won't shut down. However, it's not accurate again because the battery is completely charged. Or is it? I just don't know. Could it be a BMS problem with the big battery? And I don't have these brand new EG4 LLS batteries connected yet. I just got them. So we are going to be able to tell from this if it's accurate and if the MultiPluses or the Servo are having computer problems again. Now, when we were challenged with this with the Life Power 4s and the EG4 Communication Hub, we decided to do an upgrade with the firmware on both of those because we did an EG4 Communication Hub update and it stopped talking with the, EG4, or the Life Power 4 batteries. And then we did an update to the Life Power 4 batteries and it stopped communicating again. Now, do I think these are bad products? No, because I do have the EG4 LL version ones in my house and they have run perfectly for, what is it, almost two years now? But like I said before, I don't think this is a brand issue. This is an overall industry-wide issue and computerization issue because my friends with the Snyders and the, Sno the Solarks have had the same problems. Now, they might not be the exact problem I'm having with this, but they've had firmware problems, and that's caused various issues with their systems. I would love it if we went back to less digital electronics. I know that's not gonna happen, and more analog electronics, that's not gonna happen. I know it, but it seemed to be less of a problem. But maybe when those came on the market, they had issues with them as well. I don't know. Maybe some of you old timer computer engineers and electrical engineers, I know you're on this channel, can speak up and maybe shed some light on the issue. Friends, you are going to need to update firmware on various components in your system, whether it's the inverters or the batteries or whatever it is. You're gonna have to constantly do that because for some reason, 
they just randomly stop communicating with one another and then we all know what happens when you have bad communication. Now this can also be an issue because if you have a corrupt firmware or software that is installed into your equipment, it is going to wreak havoc on your system. I did a video recently, you can click on it at the top of the screen, about hackers hacking into American water systems, the American electrical grid, and some other logic control systems that were sold by a certain country. It's absolutely fascinating, crazy at the same time, but that is what computers bring us. The ability for others to get in there and screw things up. There's no way for me to know if I have corrupt software or firmware on here. I'm just gonna have to keep updating it and hopefully get it to a point where I don't have to touch it, at least for a while. And when you have these systems, you are going to need updated computers to be able to communicate with them and update firmware if you need to. Because as much as I would love these to just sit there and work for 10 years straight, they won't, I don't believe. Not with these computerized systems. But that's just the reality, and it is what it is. And I believe I told you in a recent video, I do not want to connect these to the internet to be constantly updated and out here on the property, I can't connect this one anyway. But that hasn't alleviated the issue I have with needing to update this and get the firmware correct and communicating with the other firmware in the other piece. All right, that's enough. I could talk about this even more. If you have had similar issues, please leave me a comment in the comment section below the video. And as I stated at the beginning, I'm still a huge proponent of this stuff, but there are a few frustrating things that you just need to get over. Now go click on these videos right here, which are the full installation instructional videos on how we put this system together. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time. Bye.